So our risk management process, identify risks, assess risks, control risks. This clip looks at the assessment of project risks. Now risks have got two dimensions. The impact of the risk, how severe it is to you, and the chance or the likelihood or the probability of it happening. And we're going to have a look at a risk map which compares these two dimensions. But if we're going to assess a risk well, and get a good assessment, we need to clearly define the risk. For instance, if somebody says the risk is bad weather, well, we can't really assess that risk because we can't, can't work out its probability or its chance. Bad weather could mean uh, heavy rain, but do we mean uh, absolute torrential downpour for three solid days, which will have a different assessment from heavy rain just for an hour? Um, Bad weather in the construction industry, freezing weather. But do we mean one day when it's sub-zero, or do we mean three months where continually it is sub-zero, which can happen? So we need to be clear on the risks before we assess it. Now, sometimes the proximity of the risk is also considered. Uh, something that's going to happen tomorrow or next week is more important to me than a risk that might happen in three or six months' time. So I also need to think about this third dimension, how soon is that risk going to uh, hit my project? Okay, so here's a description of the impact and the probability. This gentleman trying to jump this cliff. The distance he's got to jump represents his likelihood of failure. The bigger the gap, the more likely he will fail. And the drop represents the impact of failure. If it really is a deep chasm, he's going to kill himself. And of course then, it doesn't matter how wide it is, he might choose that this is too risky. Of course, if it's just a couple of feet that he's falling into some water, he might decide that he's going to chance it anyway because the impact is not that great. So we need to assess the impact of the risks and we need to assess the probability of the risks and we create a risk map. Now, in its simplest form, the impact and the probability can be assessed as low, medium, and high. Uh, instead of a three by three matrix, though, you might want to have a four by four or a five by five matrix, which gives you some more detail in your risk map. Clearly, any risk that is in that top corner with a high impact and a high probability, you're not going to do, you're going to eliminate that risk. Whereas risks that have a low impact and a low probability, you just recognize that they exist. And this is because as you go through the project, things could change and that risk probability might increase or the impact might increase. Now, it's quite easy to define what you mean by the impact of the risk. We can define what low impact means to us. We take the risk and we can equate it to either a time delay in our project or a cost impact on our project. For instance, if our project was a million pounds budget, we could identify any risk that has an impact of less than a thousand pounds as low impact. Uh, from a thousand to ten thousand pounds medium impact and we could say more than ten thousand pounds high impact. It's quite easy to get the project team to agree those categorizations. Similarly, if our project was a one-year project, we could define a low risk as a risk that has a delay of up to three days, a medium risk as a risk that has a delay of three to ten days, and a high risk, an impact of anything more than ten days. The difficulty is with the probability. I mean, I don't suggest you go with these percentages in this slide. What this is saying is, is that a high probability is more than 66%. It's also saying that a low probability risk is up to 33%. Well, one in three chance, that sounds like a pretty high probability. Oh, oh by the way, if you're going to catch an aeroplane, and I said it's a low probability, that means there's a one in three chance, up to a one in three chance of it crashing, you wouldn't be getting on the aeroplane. So it's much more difficult to define what you mean by low probability, medium probability, or high probability. 
So a supplier delivers late. Well, we can work out the impact if we say it's only two days late or it's going to cost us £10,000 to air freight that goods to us. But what's the probability of that supplier delivering late? If he's never delivered late before, that doesn't guarantee he won't be late this time. OK, we need to calculate which are the biggest risks in our project. And we can do this by calculating the risk exposure. We multiply the impact value of the risk by the probability of its occurrence. And this will give us an order for our risks. And this is why it's a good idea to uh, have a risk log that's in a database or it's sortable, because we can put our highest exposure risks at the top of the list. So we can calculate the risk exposure, put it in the risk log, and resort that risk log. Here's an example. I've got two risks. Risk one has an impact cost to us of £1,000 and a probability of it happening of 50%. Its exposure will be £500. Risk two has an impact of £8,000 and a chance of happening of 20%. Its exposure to us is £1,600. So this is saying that risk two is bigger than risk one. Risk exposure gives us a way of comparing risks. Now, if I did this for all of the risks on the project, I would end up with a total exposure value. And this would give me an excellent way of comparing one project with another project as to how risky it is. A couple of other risk assessment tools, uh, decision trees and PERT analysis. A decision tree is very useful when you can accurately determine your costs and percentages. And uh, the next slide will show an example. So a decision tree is where you could do two options, A or B. If you do A, it could have some outcomes. And if you do B, it could have some outcomes. And if you can accurately work out the percentage of these outcomes, you can get different results. And therefore, you can compare the value of your chance A against chance B. In this example, we're going to produce some components for our project on an old machine. And we know for sure from our warranty statistics that 80% of the items that come off this machine are good and 20% are faulty in some way. We, we don't know why they're faulty. We can't inspect them. They go out to the customer as faulty goods. But if we buy a new machine, we know from the supplier that it's going to be 95% good, and 3% of the components will be reworkable. So sometimes you do have accurate percentages and costs. So understanding the cost of the machine and the cost of the components, we can, we can work out how many components go through each leg of this decision tree, and we can work out the total costs. So there's a cost for reworking, there's a cost for warranty. And if we go with the old machine, this decision tree says the total cost is £120,000. And if we go with the new machine, uh, the decision tree says the total cost is more, £122,000. So if we're just looking at costs, we would go with the old machine. However, there's bigger issues here. Do we really want 20% of our customers unhappy with the product? Does the machine need calibration? Can the machine be used on other projects? Does the machine need maintenance? Who's going to operate this new machine? And these are the wider issues that we need to consider. But if you do have costs and percentages, you can use a decision tree. A final way of assessing risks is to do a PERT chart or a PERT analysis. Uh, we've already met this in our Project Planning 2 lecture when we're looking at durations. And a reminder is, is that instead of having a duration, a single duration estimate, we're going to get three estimates of duration, the optimistic, the most likely, and the pessimistic. And so when somebody is uncertain about the duration of a task, there is a risk that the duration could be between certain areas. A PERT analysis 
gives us a way of classifying that risk. Here's a reminder of the equation that we use. We get the optimistic, the most likely, the pessimistic durations. We use one optimistic, four of the most likely, one of the pessimistic. That gives us six durations, so we divide by six, and we get a calculated or expected duration for the task. Uh, I'm not really happy um, having an expected duration of five for this task when somebody said it could take as long as 12 days. But just asking them for those three durations is assessing the risk. You know, it could be two days, it's most likely four days, could be 12 days. It gives you a way of assessing how risky the duration of that task is. So to assess the risks on your project, to assess the risks, you assess their impact and their probability. You create a risk map, you calculate their exposure values, you enter all of this into the risk log, you look at your biggest risks at the top. And you could also use decision trees and PERT analysis as methods of assessing risks. <laughs>